immune therapy is obviously something that has been um, slow in breast cancer, but now all of a sudden we have data with atezolizumab, pembrolizumab, suggesting that either in the advanced disease setting or even in the preoperative setting that the, drug, uh, the drugs may have uh, enhanced either the PCR rate, which was something demonstrated in the keynote trial reported at ESMO, or uh, tezolizumab plus nabpaclitaxel in the advanced metastatic disease setting. We still have challenges trying to identify who the patients are most likely to benefit from those drugs. Obviously, Pembro seems to have a broader sweep of patients that might be candidates, whereas with the Tezo, you had to have a tumor that was pd one positive uh, in order to really uh, garner the benefit from that combination. As we go forward, it was often thought historically that it would be triple negative breast cancer patients alone most likely to benefit from the IO strategy. But now there is a lot of interest in combining IO checkpoint inhibitors with HER2 directed therapy. And even in the endocrine responsive subset of breast cancer, trying to make what are viewed as generally cold tumors hotter uh, in, in, the, in the instance of endocrine therapy, CDK4-6 inhibitors are thought to stimulate tumors to be hotter, so to speak, and they may then become candidates for combination with IO therapy. In the HER2 space, there are, we don't have much in the way of data yet, but there are clinical trials ongoing looking at the combination of HER2-directed therapy with IO therapy. And my guess is we'll be seeing data, you know, not only early data at this meeting, but by ASCO and beyond. And whether that turns into a strategy that we would employ broadly, we just have to wait for the results. It's only natural that HER2-targeted therapies are being evaluated in combination with immune checkpoint inhibitors, given that the immune system um, has been shown to be upregulated. The presence of tumor-infiltrating lymphocytes in HER2-positive tumors has been demonstrated over and over. And so the thought being that if you can combine an immune checkpoint inhibitor with a HER2-targeted therapy, you might augment that response and have better outcomes. The data um, have been lukewarm impressive at this point. Kate 2 was kind of an interesting study. TDM1 combined with atezolizumab um, didn't meet its primary endpoint. I think it's going to be really important to define what patients are most likely to respond, either by PDL1 positive status, et cetera. Um, I do think that drugs like margituximab, which enhance the ADCC by tightening that bond between the FC portion and FC receptor of the pe person's immune system should be combined with immune therapy to augment that activity. And I think we'll see better results than we even saw with Sophia if we can combine margituximab with IO. So far, the data have been uh, somewhat marginal. Uh, there is a trial, a uh, relatively small trial called Panacea that combined trastuzumab uh, with the PD-1 inhibitor pembrolizumab, which did show uh, what I think is proof of, of concept that uh, those patients, all of whom had had prior trastuzumab, did show a 15% objective response rate uh, in those patients who had pdl one positive, uh, HER2 positive cancers. So certainly not a overwhelming uh, uh, signal of efficacy, but but clearly there were some responses suggesting that at least in a subset of patients uh, that adding a checkpoint inhibitor may be beneficial. We saw similar types of data in the CATE-2 trial, which randomized patients to either TDM1 uh, with or without uh, a checkpoint inhibitor. And that study did not meet its uh, overall endpoint of improvement in progression-free survival in the intention to treat population, but again, similar to what we saw in Panacea, uh, in the pdl one positive patients, it looked like a strong trend towards improvement in progression-free survival uh, and also overall survival with the addition of the checkpoint inhibitor uh, to TDM1. So I think we're seeing uh, a signal of uh, improved efficacy, um, but we need to build upon that. And there are a number of other studies going on um, looking at uh, the combination of immune therapies uh, particularly PD-1 and PD-L1 inhibitors with HER2-directed therapy. Um, there is a study going on in the United States that's looking at a new uh, immune target called 4-1-BB, uh, which is um, 
another uh, target on immune cells that not only can stimulate T cells uh, to uh, attack tumors, but also can stimulate NK cells, which are the main mediators of ADCC, or antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity. So there's preclinical data saying that a 4-1-BB agonist uh, may be synergistic with trastuzumab to get more ADCC activity. So there is a randomized trial called Aviator that's comparing uh, chemotherapy and trastuzumab with either the pdl one inhibitor of Alumab or uh, uh, chemotherapy trastuzumab of Alumab and a new 4-1-BB agonist called udamilumab. So there's a number of uh, interesting ideas being tested right now, but, right, but currently from the available data, it's hard to say that immune therapy is a um, active uh, agent uh, to be used in HER2-positive metastatic disease, but we're uh, continuing to work hard to try to uh, change that.